Okay, shall we go to chapter 2, Muchalinda Vaga. Muchalinda is the Muchalinda tree. Lah. Uh, we are happy to say we have a Muchalinda tree in front. Eh? <laughs> 2.1, Muchalinda Sutta. Thus have I heard. At one time the Lord was staying at Uruvela beside the river Naranjara at the foot of the Muchalinda tree, having just realized full enlightenment. At that time the Lord sat cross-legged for seven days, experiencing the bliss of liberation. Now it happened that there occurred out of season a great rainstorm and for seven days there were rain clouds, cold winds and unsettled weather. Then Muchalinda, the Naga king, left his dwelling place and having encircled the Lord's body seven times with his coils, he stood with his great hood spread over the Lord's head, thinking to protect the Lord from cold and heat, from gadflies, mosquitoes, wind, sun and the touch of creeping things. At the end of those seven days, the Lord emerged from that concentration. Then Muchalinda, the Naga king, seeing that the sky had cleared and the rain clouds had gone, removed his coils from the Lord's body, changing his own appearance and assuming the appearance of a youth. He stood in front of the Lord with his hands folded together, venerating him. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance. Blissful is detachment for one who is content, for one who has learned Dhamma and who sees. Blissful is non-affliction in the world, restraint towards living creatures. Blissful is passionlessness in the world, the overcoming of sensual desires, but the abolition of the conceit I am. That is truly the supreme bliss. Uh, so when the I uh, is eliminated, uh, uh, the Buddha says, uh, this is bliss supreme. Uh, 2.2 Raja Sutta Thus have I heard, at one time the Lord was staying near Savati in the Jeta wood at Anatta Pindika's monastery. On that occasion, after the meal, on returning from collecting alms food, a number of monks had gathered together in the assembly hall when this topic of conversation arose. Which of these two kings, friend, has greater wealth, greater possessions, greater treasury, greater territory, conveyances, army, prosperity and power. Sinia Bimbisara, the king of Magadha, or Pasanadi, the king of Kosala. And this conversation of those monks continued without coming to an end. Then the Lord, emerging from seclusion in the evening, went to the assembly hall and sat down on the seat prepared for him. Sitting there, the Lord asked the monks, What were you talking about just now, monks? while gathered here together, what was the topic of discussion that you had left unfinished? And they said, After the meal revered, sir, this topic of conversation arose. Which of these two kings has the greater wealth? Sinia, etc., etc. Sinia Bimbisara, the king of Magadha, or Pasanadi, the king of Kosala. This revered, sir, was our discussion that was left unfinished when the Lord arrived. Stop here for a moment. Huh? So you see, uh, after the meal in the morning until the Evening, uh, they were discussing this uh, hot topic. And the Buddha said, It is not right, monks, that you sons of good family, who have gone forth out of faith from home to the homeless state, should talk on such a topic. When you have gathered together, monks, you should do one of two things, either engage in talk on Dhamma or maintain noble silence. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance. Whatever bliss in the world is found in sensual pleasures, and whatever there is of heavenly bliss, these are not worth a sixteenth part of the bliss of craving's destruction. But uh, worldly people, uh, we only know sensual pleasures, uh, so we don't know the bliss of craving's destruction. That's why uh, worldly people uh, always like to engage in sensual pleasures. Uh, 2.3 Danda Sutta Danda referring here to the stick. Thus have I heard. At one time the Lord was staying near Savati in the Jeta wood at Anatta Pindika's monastery. On that occasion, between Savati and the Jeta wood, a number of boys were hitting a snake with a stick. Now the Lord, having put on his robe in the forenoon and taken his bowl and outer robe, was going to Savati to collect alms food when he saw those boys between Savati and the Jeta wood hitting a snake with a stick. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance. 
who harms with a stick beings desiring happiness though he himself seeks happiness he does not obtain it after death who harms not with a stick beings desiring happiness while he himself seeks happiness he obtains it after death so what we do to others we get back in return we give suffering we get back suffering 2.4 sakara sutta respected thus have i heard at one time the lord was staying near savati in the jeta wood at anatha pindika's monastery at that time the lord was respected revered honored venerated and given homage and he obtained the requisites of robes arms food lodgings and medicines and the sangha of monks was was also respected but the wanderers of other sects who were not respected revered honored venerated and given homage and they did not obtain the requisites of robes arms food lodgings and medicines then those wanderers of other sects unable to tolerate the respect shown to the lord and the sangha of monks on seeing monks in the village and in the forest reviled abused provoked and annoyed them with insults and harsh words then a number of monks approached the lord prostrated themselves and sat down to one side sitting there those monks said to the lord a present revered sir the lord is respected etc and the sangha of monks is also respected but the wanderers of other sects are not respected etc and now revered sir those wanderers and able to tolerate the respect shown towards the lord on seeing monks provoke and annoy them with insults and harsh words then on realizing its significance the lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance when affected by pleasure and pain in the village and forest one should not ascribe them to oneself or another contacts affect one dependent on clinging how can contacts affect one without clinging so contacts are always there lah but uh, if we have no clinging or grasping uh, then it won't affect us lah uh, just like uh, you hear unpleasant words uh, if you are disturbed by them uh, then you have to be blame yourself lah because you let them uh, disturb you lah but if you just ignore them uh, uh, then they don't affect you lah buddha said wise words we should a listen uh, and keep in our mind uh, but if people scold you and say silly things uh, just let it go in one ear and go out the other uh, rubbish uh, don't keep uh, uh. 2.5 upasaka sutta upasaka is a layman uh. that's what i heard at one time the lord was staying near savati in the jeta wood at anatha pindika's monastery on that occasion a certain lay follower from ichanangala had arrived at savati on some business or other then when that business in savati had been completed the lay follower approached the lord prostrated himself and sat down to one side as he was sitting there the lord said to that lay follower at last lay follower you have found an opportunity to come here and he said for a long time revered sir i have wanted to come and see the lord but being involved with various affairs or business that had to be done I was just not able to come personally and see the Lord. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance. Blissful indeed is it to own nothing. When one is learned and has mastered the Dhamma, see how people who own things are afflicted, for people are strongly bound to people. So this man, he uh, is a follower of the Buddha, and he wanted to see the buddha but he had so much commitments uh, so busy uh, not able to come finally he came it reminds me of our brother goh's friend and brother goh say wanted to come here to become uh, samanera he invited his friend to come then his friend said he was busy la uh, wait in a few months time i will come la uh, and then uh, one or two days ago he heard the news that his friend his friend suddenly passed away had attack never expect so few months or so huh? cannot wait huh? time waits for no man <laughs> so is this type of uh, news huh? is good news lah is a deva messenger come to to the family is is bad news lah but uh, to brother go it should be good news lah in the sense that uh, is a waking up call lah <laughs> 2.6 gabini sutta about the pregnant woman 
Thus have I heard. At one time, the Lord was staying near Savati in Jeta Wood at Anatha Pindika's monastery. On that occasion, the young wife of a certain wanderer said to the wanderer, Go and fetch some oil, Brahmin. I will use it at my delivery. When this was said, that wanderer replied to the woman wanderer, But where can I get oil for you? Stop here for a moment. Huh? So you see this, both of them are wanderers, both are ascetics. Huh? They're probably they are naked ascetics, huh? and then they had an affair. Now the woman is pregnant huh? and wants to get some oil. And the second time and the third time, that woman wanderer said to the wanderer, Go and fetch some oil, Brahmin. I will use it at my delivery. At that time, at the storehouse of King Pasnadi of Kosala, there was being given to any recluse or Brahmin as much as he wanted of ghee or oil to drink, but not to take away. Then that wanderer thought, At the storehouse of King Pasnadi of Kosala, there is being given to any recluse or Brahmin as much as he wants of ghee or oil to drink, but not to take away. What if I went to the storehouse and drank as much oil as I wanted, and having returned home and vomited it up, should offer it to my wife for use at her delivery? So that wanderer, stop here for a moment. Huh? So this uh, wanderer, huh, he got no money to buy any oil for the wife. Huh? So he thought huh, the only way to get it huh, is to get it from the king's storehouse. Huh? And then later come back and vomit it out. Huh? So that wanderer went to the storehouse of King Pasanadi of Kosala, and having drunk and having drunk as much oil as he wanted, he returned home, but was able neither to bring it up or to make it pass through him. Experiencing feelings that were acute, painful, sharp and severe, he rolled about in agony. Now the Lord, having put on his robe in the forenoon and taken his bowl and outer robe, was going to Savati to collect alms food. And the Lord saw that wanderer rolling about in agony. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance. They are happy indeed who own nothing at all. Those with highest knowledge own nothing at all. See how people who own things are afflicted. For people are strongly bound to people. So see, this is the second sutta to say eh, people are bound to people. Our, those that we uh, love uh, are strong bonds. Uh. The Buddha said, uh, uh, even iron chains uh, uh, are not strong. Uh, even iron chains, uh, you, can, you can break them, you can destroy them. Uh. But bonds to the family, uh, ties to the family uh, are so strong, uh, very hard to break. Laser beam also cannot break. 2.7, Eka Putta Sutta, Eka is one, Putta is son. Thus have I heard, at one time the Lord was staying near Savati in the Jeta wood at Anatha Pindika's monastery. At that time the dearly beloved only son of a certain lay follower had died. Then a number of lay followers with wet clothes and hair approached the Lord in the middle of the day, prostrated themselves and sat down to one side. As they were sitting there, the Lord said to those lay followers, Why have you come here in the middle of the day, lay followers with wet clothes and hair? When this was said, that lay follower replied to the Lord, My dearly beloved only son, revered sir, has died. That is why we have come here in the middle of the day with wet clothes and hair. So this, uh, stop here for a moment. Uh, so this uh, Indian tradition, uh, when they mourn the death of somebody, uh, then uh, they put water on their clothes and their hair. Uh. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance, Devas and most men are truly fettered by what they hold as dear and pleasant. Worn out with grief when their dear ones die, they fall into the power of the king of death. But those who are heedful day and night, who abandon whatever is dear, the bait of death so hard to overcome. They dig up the root of grief. So you see, eh? uh, what we love, eh? we want to cling to. Lah. But life is such, eh? uh, actually we own nothing. Eh? A lot of people, when you, when you have a family, when we have property and all that, eh? you're very happy, you think you own this and you own that. Eh? Actually we own nothing. 
we came into this world empty-handed and we will go empty-handed. Uh, so we have to realize this. Uh, sometimes we think uh, because uh, we love our family members, we don't want to hurt them. But actually, uh, sometimes hurting them uh, is good uh, so that they understand impermanence uh, faster. Uh. Just like when I renounce. Uh, Later, my mother told me every day when she thought about me, uh, every day the tears will come down for two years. Uh, then after two years, when she saw me again, uh, then she realized I was happy as a monk and she stopped weeping. Uh, so because of that pain, uh, for two years uh, later, she let go, uh, let go. So in the later years of her life, uh, she didn't cling to anything already. Uh, the most, like the, the most uh, beloved son, I uh, was the youngest uh, already have to let go, so she learned to let go, <laughs> nothing to, uh, to cling to, which is good, nah. so she didn't, didn't die with attachment in her mind. We have to let go sooner or later, the earlier we realize it, we suffer for a while and then later we get used to the idea. If you all have uh, close relatives who have died, you will notice, for example, and my father died. My mother cried so much. But after a few years, the pain it will go away. Time heals everything. So the same in life. Whatever pain we experience after a while, it's no more pain. We get used to it. 2.8 Supervasa Sutta Thus have I heard. At one time, the Lord was staying at Kundia in the Kunditana wood. On that occasion, Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, had been pregnant for seven years and for seven days had experienced difficult labor. But although she experienced feelings that were acute, painful, sharp and severe, her mind was occupied with three thoughts. The Lord indeed is a fully enlightened one who teaches Dhamma for abandoning such suffering as this. The Sangha of the Lord's disciples is indeed progressing on the right path following a path to abandon such suffering as this. Nibbana is indeed perfect bliss, where such suffering is not found. Then Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, said to her husband, Come, master, go to the Lord, and approaching him in my name, worship the Lord with your head at his feet, and ask concerning his health and well-being, fitness, strength and comfort, saying, Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, revered sir, worships the Lord with her head, head at his feet and ask concerning his health and well-being and also say, Supervasa, revered sir, has been pregnant for seven years and for seven days has experienced difficult labor. But although she experiences feelings that are acute, her mind has been occupied with three thoughts. The Lord is, in, is indeed a fully enlightened one. Uh, the Dhamma uh, is for abandoning Suffering as this, the Sangha of the Lord's disciples is progressing on the right path. Nibbana is indeed perfect bliss, where such suffering is not found. Very well, replied the Kolian son to Supervasa, and he approached the Lord, prostrated himself and sat down to one side. Sitting there, he said to the Lord, Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, revered sir, worships the Lord with her head at his feet. But although she experiences feelings that are acute, the mind has been occupied with three thoughts, etc., etc. And the Buddha said, May Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, be well and healthy and give birth to a healthy son. When the Lord had spoken these words, Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, became well and healthy and gave birth to a healthy son. The Kolian son saying, So be it, revered sir, pleased and appreciative of the Lord's words, arose from his seat, prostrated himself to the Lord, and keeping his right side towards him, returned home. And the Kolian son saw that Supervasa was well and healthy, and had given birth to a healthy son. On seeing this, he thought, It is indeed wonderful, it is indeed marvelous, the great supernormal potency and power of the Tathagata. When those words were spoken by the Lord, Supervasa became well and healthy, and gave birth to a healthy son. And he was pleased and delighted and became joyful and happy. Stop here for a moment. Uh. The Buddha says, uh, <clears throat> whatever he says uh, is true and not otherwise. Uh. Every word. Uh. So when the Buddha says, uh, uh, 
that the Supervasa uh, be well and healthy and give birth to a healthy son. Uh, so that must come true. Uh. Then Supervasa said to her husband, Come, Master, go to the Lord, and approaching him in my name, worship the Lord with your head at his feet, and say, Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, revered sir, worships the Lord with her head at his feet, and also say, Supervasa, revered sir, was pregnant for seven years and for seven days experienced difficult labor. She is now well and healthy, and has given birth to a healthy son. She invites the Sangha of monks to a meal for seven days. Please consent, revered sir, to Supervasa's providing seven meals for the Lord together with his Sangha of monks. Very well, replied the Kolian son to Supervasa, and he approached the Lord and said, Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, revered sir, worships the Lord with her head at his feet, etc. She is now well and healthy, and has given birth to a healthy son. Please consent, revered sir, to Supervasa's providing seven meals for the Lord, together with the Sangha of monks. Now at that time, a certain lay follower had invited the Sangha of monks, headed by the Buddha, to a meal the next day. And that lay follower was a supporter of the Venerable Maha Moggallana. Then the Lord called the Venerable Maha Moggallana and said, Come, Moggallana, go to that lay follower and say, Friends, Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, invites the Sangha of monks headed by the Buddha to a meal for seven days. Allow Supervasa to give her seven meals. Your supporter can give his afterwards. Very well, revered sir, the Venerable Maha Moggallana replied to the Lord. And he went to the lay supporter and repeated what the Lord had said. And the man said, If revered sir, the noble Mahamogalana will be my surety for three things, for wealth, life and faith, then let Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, give her seven meals and I will give mine afterwards. And Mahamogalana, the Arahan, said, For two of these things, friend, I will be your surety for wealth and life. But as for faith, you are your own surety. Stop it for a moment. Huh? So, Verbal Maha Mughalana said, huh? For these seven days, huh, you postpone your dana, uh, your wealth will not diminish lah, and your life will not go away. Lah. That I can assure you. Lah. But your faith, huh, you decide yourself. Lah. And then he said, If revered sir, the noble Maha Mughalana will be my surety for two things, for wealth and life. I allow Supervasa to give her seven meals. I will give mine afterwards. Then the Venerable Maha Moggallana, having obtained the consent of that lay follower, approached the Lord and said, That lay follower of mine has consented, revered sir. Let Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, give her seven meals. He will give his afterwards. So Supervasa, the Kolian daughter, with her own hand, served and satisfied the Sangha of monks, headed by the Buddha, with sumptuous solid and soft food for seven days. And she made her child pay homage to the Lord and the whole Sangha of monks. Then the verbal Sariputta said to the child, Are you well, child? Are you healthy? Have you any pain? And he replied, How revered Sariputta can I be well? How can I be healthy? I have spent seven years in a cauldron of blood. Then Supervasa reflecting, My son is conversing with the general of the Dhamma, was pleased and delighted and became joyful and happy. Then the Lord said to Supervasa, Do you wish you could have another such son? And she said, I wish, Lord, I could have seven more such sons. Then on realizing his significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance, Discomfort in the guise of pleasure, the unloved in the guise of love, suffering in the guise of bliss, overpower the heedless one. So you see this uh, Supervasa, she suffered for seven years uh, <laughs> carrying the baby and then uh, seven days of uh, great pain, uh, laboring. Uh, and after the son was born, she forgot all that. Uh, uh, women like to have a lot of children. Uh, <laughs> but this uh, Sutta uh, is a, a bit uh, unusual uh, in the sense that it says that this woman was pregnant for seven years. Uh, and also this last part, now, where the son, now, so young, now, can talk to the um, Sariputta. I don't know how come it's like this. But this sutta is it's not found in other places. Uh. don't know whether it was a later edition or what. Uh. Uh. This, this sutta, yeah, I don't remember. 
โอเค 2.9 วิสักขาสุดตา Thus have I heard at one time the Lord was staying near Savati in the eastern park at Migara's mother's mansion Stop here for a moment uh. Uh, Migara's mother uh, is uh, v i s a k a uh, Migara is the father-in-law uh, because she was so good to the father-in-law the father-in-law called her mother uh, that's why she's called Mi- Migara's mother uh. On that occasion, v i s a k a Migara's mother, was involved in some business with King Pasnadi of Kosala, and this the king did not conclude as she intended. So v i s a k a approached the Lord in the middle of the day, prostrated herself, and sat down to one side. As she was sitting there, the Lord said to her, "Well, v i s a k a where have you come from in the middle of the day?" And she said, "I was involved in some business, revered sir, with King Pasnadi of Kosala." And this, the king did not conclude as I had intended. Then, on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance: "All subjection to another is painful; all sovereignty is bliss. Partners share in affliction; bonds, indeed, are difficult to overcome." So, this uh, king made some decision uh, that uh, v i s a k a was not happy with. Uh, that's why. Uh, He said, "Did not conclude as she wanted." Two point ten, Badia Sutta. Thus have I heard. At one time, the Lord was staying at Anupia in the mango orchard. At that time, the venerable Badia, Kaligoda's son, was going into the forest to the foot of a tree or to an empty place. Constantly uttered, "Ah, what bliss! Ah, what bliss!" A number of monks heard the venerable Badia constantly uttering, "Ah, what bliss! Ah, what bliss!" And the thought came to them: No doubt, friend, the venerable Badia Kaligoda's son or Kaligoda Putta was is dissatisfied with leading the holy life, since formerly he, when he was a householder, he enjoyed the bliss of royalty. And when recollecting that, on going into the forest, he utters, "Ah, what bliss! Ah, what bliss!" Stop here for a moment. Ah, this Badia is the Sakyan chief, l a Uh, sometimes people like to say the Buddha's father was the chief of the Sakyans. It's not true, lah. This uh, Badia is mentioned in the Vinaya books uh, as the real chief of the Sakyans and a very good friend of Anuruddha. Lah. So when Anuruddha wanted to renounce, uh, the mother refused to give permission. She pleaded. He pleaded so many times, or so uh, mother refused to give permission. Then the mother thought of a of a trick, lah, because he is. Uh, This Badia is a very close friend of An- Anuruddha, then the the and uh, being the king of the the chief lah of the of the Sakyans, uh, she thought na uh, Badia will never renounce lah. So she told the Anuruddha, the son, uh, if Badia agrees to renounce with you, uh, I will give you permission to renounce. She never expect that uh, Badia will renounce lah. So when Anuruddha went to Badia, at first he refused lah. But being a very good friend, very good friend, this uh, Anuruddha constantly uh, pleaded with him. Lah. Then he said, after much pleading, he said, "Ah, yeah, seven years time, lah." Then uh, Anuruddha said, "Too long, or seven years?" Then he said, "Six years, lah." Slowly reduced five years, one year, and then one year, so too long. He said, "Ah, uh, eleven months, ah, uh, ten months." After reduced until seven days, lah. Then Anuruddha agreed, lah. So after seven days, I think he. Began. He renounced, lah. But he had so much merit, lah. Within, I think, three months of renouncing, lah, uh, uh, during the reigns, ah, uh, he uh, became an arahan. So be- after he became an arah- arahan, lah, uh, he was in such bliss, lah, uh, always going around, lah, uh, saying, "Ah, what bliss!" Uh, what. <laughs> Then a number of monks approached the Lord, prostrated themselves, sat down to one side, and reported this to the Lord. Then the Lord addressed a certain monk, "Come, monk." In my name, tell the monk Badia. The teacher calls you, friend Badia. Very well, revered sir. The monk replied. And approaching the venerable Badia, Kaligoda's son, he said, "The teacher calls you, friend Badia." Very well, friend. The venerable Badia replied. And approaching the Lord, he prostrated himself and sat down to one side. The Lord then said to him, "Is it true, Badia, that on going to the forest you utter, 'Ah, what bliss! Ah, what bliss!'?" Yes, revered sir. And the Buddha said, "But Badia, what do you see that prompts you to do so?" And he said, "Formerly, revered sir, when I was a householder, enjoyed the, and enjoyed the bliss of royalty, inside and outside my inner apartments, guards were appointed. Inside and outside the city, guards were appointed. Inside and outside the district, 
guards were appointed. But revered sir, although I was thus guarded and protected, I lived fearful, agitated, distrustful and afraid. But now, revered sir, on going alone into the forest, to the foot of a tree or to an empty place, I am fearless, unagitated, confident and unafraid. I live unconcerned, unruffled, my needs satisfied, with a mind become like a deer's. Seeing this, revered sir, prompts me on going to the forest to utter constantly, Ah, what bliss, ah, what bliss. Then on realizing its significance, the Lord uttered on that occasion this inspired utterance in whom exist no inner stirrings, having passed beyond being this or that, free from fear, blissful and sorrowless, the devas are not capable of seeing him. Uh, it's the end of the sutta. So we finish here for tonight. Uh, anything to discuss? Uh, this last part. Eh? Normally, it's like uh, after the arahan uh, attains parinibbana, uh, after uh, the body has died, uh, then the devas cannot see him anymore. Uh, but while he's alive, uh, they can see his body. Uh, Maybe it refers to not seeing his self anymore, like he has no more self. You can, you can, but uh, if a person has not attained jhana, when we sit down and uh, meditate, uh, normally we try to discipline the mind uh, because uh, if you contemplate without a mind which is one-pointed, uh, uh, you are, the five hindrances are blocking you. Uh, and in the sutta, the Buddha said, uh, as long as the five hindrances hinder us, uh, block us, uh, then we can never see and know uh, things as they really are. But uh, if you want to contemplate, say like dependent origination, uh, don't do it while you are sitting down with your eyes closed and trying to uh, discipline your mind. When you are free, uh, when you are walking, when you are sitting in a bus, when you have nothing to do, uh, not during meditation, uh, then you can contemplate. Anytime you can reflect on the Dhamma. So Vipassana... Uh, meaning contemplation uh, can be done uh, uh, any time of the day, uh, any one of the four postures. Uh. But samatha, you can only practice uh, when you are sitting down with your eyes closed. Uh. Uh, so the seventh factor of the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, which is uh, um, uh, samasati, is basically vipassana. Uh. And the eighth factor, uh, samasamadhi, uh, is basically samatha. Uh. So the seventh factor you can contemplate without sitting down with your eyes closed. The eighth factor you have to sit down with your eyes closed. Mm-hmm. Um, not exactly sure what it means, lah. But it could be partners, uh, like here. Uh, it's like the boss and the and the 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 subject, lah. Uh, so they they are partners in in in. Uh, in a certain sense, or even uh, partners in a family, eh? uh, then um, there's always conflict, lah, so there's affliction. Lah. You can interpret in a few ways. Lah. Uh, 
body is restless, is it because of food or is it because of... Why, why is the body restless? Maybe the more you sit, then it will slowly come down. Normally it's the mind that is restless, the body is not restless. Now you can practice them all the time, la. but uh, the best is sitting. La. Uh, if you lie down, it's easy to fall asleep. La. You stand, uh, it's easy to become tired. No? You walk also can become tired. No? But uh, say like, uh, uh, if you are sitting, uh, then maybe you can practice say like anapanasati. La. But uh, if your concentration is good, uh, then you are walking also you can practice anapanasati, lying down and uh, standing. La. But if your concentration is not good, uh, you are just beginning. Uh, then you can change your object, no? like when you're sitting down, if you like to practice anapanasati, you do so. No? Then when you're walking, no? you can and just do simple chanting. No? Uh, you synchronize it with your feet. No? For example, if you say Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya. When your right foot touches the ground, you say Namo. When your left foot touches the ground, you say Buddhaya. Uh, so if you do that, no? you have to always notice no? and try to synchronize. No? The mind does not run away so easily. No? And even when you are lying down, if you are afraid you are going to fall off into sleep, then you keep chanting. And if you, some people, of course, you do chanting also, you still fall asleep. Then in which case, you chant plus move your finger. And Namo, you move your right finger. Buddhaya, you move your left finger like that. As long as you are moving your finger, you won't fall asleep. <laughs> the moment you stop moving, you fall asleep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you can practice, la, provided you have the strength of mind la, <laughs> and the determination. La. A lot of people, la, uh, for a lot of people, la, you don't seem to have the urgency. La. You think you still got many years to go. <laughs> If a person like like them, uh, they would have attained the fourth jhana. If they have attained the fourth jhana, uh, the mind is very calm, uh, attain the imper- imperturbable state. Uh, and also, uh, uh, there is a there is a sentence uh, in the sutta that says that uh, uh, this uh, satipatthana is a characteristic of samadhi. Uh, something like that. So once you have attained uh, the jhanas, uh, then your uh, satipatthana is like automatic. Uh, your 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 mindfulness uh, is because your mind is very clear, uh, and uh, you have mindfulness uh, most of the time. Uh. Mm-hmm. Do Tanga practice? Uh, it depends on which do Tanga practice, la, and whether the, uh, the monk uh, is ready for it. La. Generally, when a monk is new, uh, uh, 
see like the first five years, uh, uh, probably is not good, uh, not good, uh, not advisable uh, to practice the uh, Dutanga uh, because uh, you have to, uh, the foundation, uh, you have to build up the foundation first. Uh, foundation is to learn the suttas and the Vinaya well uh, every day uh, to study the suttas and the Vinaya. Uh, and then after five years, uh, when the monk is uh, knowledgeable in the suttas and the vinaya, then uh, uh, he can concentrate on practice. La. At that time, uh, then only uh, he can uh, uh, what, do whatever, do tanga he wants. La. But uh, to start off too early uh, uh, is not advisable. La. Even meditation, uh, in the beginning, the first five years, uh, monk should not meditate too much effort la, because uh, uh, the first five years uh, the priority is to learn the suttas and the uh, vinaya and to serve the senior monks and to learn a lot of things. La. Uh, uh, then when you have finished five years you are well trained and then only uh, you concentrate on practice. La. should not be too early. La. Because, uh, as I mentioned the other day, uh, like uh, a Kung Fu uh, pupil, uh, those in the Shaolin Monastery, first one year he does nothing but the horse stands, uh, Ma Po, Chak Ma Po. Uh, then uh, nothing but Chak Ma Po. There is a foundation. Without a strong, this, uh, uh, strong legs uh, can easily fall. Uh, so in the same uh, Malaysia can because uh, the Dutanga practices uh, in the Theravada they're supposed to be 13 uh, and uh, there are things like uh, only begging for your food uh, eating one meal a day uh, uh, but also you must see, la, as I mentioned, uh, uh, when you when you have uh, finished uh, five years of training, uh, then uh, certain of these things you can do. La. Uh, but uh, also, uh, if you some of these things uh, is uh, suitable uh, if you live alone. Uh, if you live alone, uh, but for example, if you stay in a monastery like this, uh, there are there is uh, physical work to be done. Uh, for example, our water comes from uh, from the hill. Uh. So, if anything wrong with the water, uh, you have to go up. Uh. So, you if you practice certain things like uh, eating one meal a day, uh, then you won't, won't be able to do physical work uh, in the monastery. Uh. Uh, before I came here, uh, for more than 10 years, I was eating one meal a day. Uh, after I came here, I found that uh, a lot of physical work to do, especially in the beginning. Uh, in the beginning, when there's a lot of work to do, uh, very few people want to come. Uh, even our Richard came here uh, at that time, very strong. Uh, after doing some work, he got so frightened, such heavy work, uh, he didn't come back for a few years. Uh. Later on, uh, he came back. Uh, other people also like that. There were two brothers from Alusta, very eager, came here. They stayed you know, two or three days. After that, nah, never come back again because they complained to other people. The work so heavy here. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, the work was very heavy. Uh, but now, uh, that's much less work. Lah. But still, nah, things like going up the hill. Last time in the beginning, uh, our water source, uh, after we clean it today, uh, tomorrow, it, the water doesn't come. And we have to go up again. Every few days, we go up again. So very strenuous. If you take one meal a day, you 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 you, you cannot uh, you cannot stand. So you might have to use your wisdom. Uh, don't be too eager uh, to practice these two tangas. Uh, you have to know uh, your the priority uh, now uh, in the monastery uh, is to uh, as a as a young monk uh, is to serve the the senior monk to do our duties. Uh, that is the priority. Later, when a monk lives alone, uh, he can do whatever he likes. When we stay together, I must realize our duties. Mm. Mm. 
If you find that suitable, you can practice it. Na. But in the uh, suttas, the Buddha never mentioned this. Na. In the suttas, uh, if a monk practices anapanasati when sitting down, na, uh, the Buddha's monks, they practice very hard. And they try to maintain their mindfulness 24 hours a day. La. And they keep to the same object. La. If they are contemplating the the breath, uh, then they keep to the same object. If they are doing chanting on the 32 parts of the body, then they keep to the same object. Uh. But for lay people, uh, you don't have much time to practice and you can't build up much concentration. So you can change your object. Uh. And the easier one uh, when you are walking uh, is to do chanting. As I mentioned just now, uh, you synchronize your chanting with your feet. Uh. Easier, much easier than. No, I said that is for monks. If you can do that 24 hours a day, yeah, you're supposed to do that. Nah. But for lay people, I say you can't do. So you change your object, nah, whichever suits you. Nah. Yes, yes. Okay, shall we stop here?